zombies, 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 zombies. And welcome back to Coffee with Toffees. Guys, it has been too long, but I am glad to be back with you here today in the studio to return. Uh, welcome to the return of Coffee with Toffees. For those of you who don't know or have been saying, where have you been if you didn't catch my last video? Uh, I have been gone for a little while, a little over a... Uh almost two weeks now because the doctor told me that I was no longer allowed to broadcast uh, under the circumstances. I had the flu. My voice was completely shot. You probably still hear a little bit of that. Uh, <clears throat> I'm definitely drinking more water than coffee. But we are on the heel and it is time to come back with more Dota. So that's what we're doing here today and there's a lot to talk about. So buckle your seatbelts and settle in because we got all kinds of great things today. We've got uh, all of the tournament recap. We're going to talk about power rankings that just came out for the first time as well as some of the issues going on at MLG Columbus. But before we do that, I do want to let you know that our show today is brought to you by the good people over at Razor and the good people over at Betway. Both are uh, sponsors. If you want to check them out, you can check the bottom of the stream. And uh, we're really happy to have them come on board. So one is an esports betting site and one is a maker of really great peripherals uh, for gaming, all of which I have in front of me now and I'm happy to have. So that said, let's talk a little bit about what's going on in the scene right now. First off, we can talk about the fact that MLG Columbus is underway. It has kicked off, uh, and it is quite an event or is shaping up to be. Now, there's been some interesting stuff uh, that's developed in the first day. Before it even started, though, I want to say that Join Dota has had a very strong uh, preview for the tournament. They're very involved with the process. And, uh, in fact, there was even an article written by our writer for the show, Proxy PL, uh, over on Join Dota about Not Today uh, and their readiness for the tournament and what they're looking forward to from it that said there's an interesting reason that we bring that up and it's because of the situation that not today found themselves in this is tournament related um, and what it is is not today hit flight delays and issues with travel and were unable to make it for their game against eg as i understand and uh, barely made it for their game against ninjas in pajamas today and a lot of folks were angry. They were saying, well, why would you force a forfeit against EG, which is what happened, uh, because of flight issues? Isn't MLG paying for travel? The answer is yes, but it's not that simple. What happened is, not today, uh, as Melk tweeted out about, he said, uh, not today insisted on booking their own flights through the stipend and are thus late. MLG said in the future they will book all flights. That seems pretty cut and dry to me. It says that if you say that you're going to book your own flight, it is your responsibility to make sure that you are present at the time uh, that this whole thing kicks off. But it's not that simple, is it? Because Cyborg Matt tweeted out a little bit later, we warned MLG that their travel stipend was way too low for an American event, and it looks like not today couldn't even afford to arrive one day early. He then continues with a second tweet that says they literally landed less than an hour ago due to delays and are now being forced to play or receive another default loss. So what it comes down to, the framing that we see is that MLG said, yes, we'll pay. Not today said, well, it's not enough. It's not enough for us to afford to come in a day early. We've got to cut as much travel time out as we can. Hotels, food, these things are expensive. We're going to come in the day of the tournament. They had some delays. They missed a game, and then they were forced to play an hour after landing. It's a tough call. You know, uh, if, if a tournament says they're going to supply travel stipends for the teams, it should be enough to cover their cost if that is the claim that is being made up front. At the end of the day, uh, I think that a lot of folks are angry about not today having to forfeit. It's a tournament and it's on a schedule. Rescheduling is a tough thing to do. Yes, it's a best of one, but if, uh, you know, if this happened in a, any other major sport, if an NFL team didn't make it to their opponent's stadium on the time of the game, it would be considered a forfeit. It would have been in my high school sports. It's just the way that the world works. That means the travel is up to you. If, if funding is an issue, it is what it is. It is very sad, but there are many high school games that I played in throughout my life and college as well where people were unable to... Uh, 
play because of the fact that they could not afford the travel costs. And it's it's a harsh reality to the sport. It says, let's get some sponsors on these guys. Not Today, I think, has proven themselves in the last couple of weeks, if not months, that they are a force to be reckoned with and uh, need to find a way to make these things happen. So my heart goes out to them. I think that they were going to have a really good showing in this tournament. This is definitely a tough start. That's it. Let's talk about the tournament news in general. We got a lot of tournament news. We're going to run through it all. And thankfully, our writer on the show, Proxy, has come to my rescue today and uh, provided me with one heck of a tournament recap. So settle in, buckle your seatbelts. Here we go. Sorry, I'm still getting over that cold. All right, so Dota MLG Pro League Season 1. Land finals are being held this weekend during MLG Columbus. The format is interesting as there is a group stage being played. And then the first place finisher goes straight to the grand final. Second place goes to the semifinal. Third place and fourth in the quarterfinals. Fifth and sixth, eliminated. So participating teams, as you might already know, are EG, Not Today, Ninjas in Pajamas, Balkan Bears Corleo, Team Empire, uh, they're playing with Funic, by the way, because Yoki could not get his visa. And MVP Phoenix, as they are replacing Rave, who also could not attend based on visa issues. Prize pool, 75000 up front, has grown to about 85000 only a 13% increase. Uh, it has been low on ticket sales, but I think it also has been a tough uh, tournament in terms of vision because of its insistent to be on MLG TV instead of on Twitch. Now, if you are a Nahaz fan, you are very happy about this tournament because Nahaz, a couple of days ago, got tweeted by the MLG organization. They said, can you be in Ohio? He said, sure, I live nearby. He's there. He's working the panel. And I got to say, he's the Drow Ranger of this panel because he is carrying the crap out of it. And uh, I'm glad that Nahaz is finally getting some recognition. Uh, somebody said that he's doing a great job. I agree with that. And honestly, this is a moment I'm going to soapbox for a second. When we come to panels, when we look at live events like this, something that I really appreciate having Nahaz there for is he is an analyst in every sense of the pedigree. He is a numbers man, a lover of the game, an understander of the minutia. And that's really what you see when you talk about analysts in most sports. Hosts are great for bringing energy. They're great for running events. They're great for doing interviews. They're great at that. And hopefully they understand the game as well. A good host really has to do both things. A caster is amazing for what they do. They're great. They have good insight. They have great energy. And a pro is just smart and good to have on the panel. But at the end of the day, I think having an analyst, and it's been proven so far in MLG Pro, like Nahaz on the panel, is something that brings a lot to the assessment between games, makes it feel like I'm actually watching a pro event uh, in any other sport. And I want to give props to MLG for bringing him in. So it has been phenomenal to have him there. Predictions are pretty simple. Evil Geniuses is the favorite coming out of the gate for first, but second is going to be a close race. It's going to be between Nip, in my opinion, Empire, and I would have said not today until the situation that came up with travel. The actual rankings at the end of day one are Evil Geniuses uh, 2-0. We're going to have Ninjas of Pajamas 2-0, Team Empire 1-1, one and one, MVP Phoenix 1-1, one and one, and then the big surprise is not today at 0-2. Because of the fact that, uh, you know, you could argue that they were tired when they played Ninjas in Pajamas. Though NIP is a team that was slated to potentially beat them. Also, they had to forfeit their Game 1. So both of these things definitely played a major role in their current position. Can they still get back into this? Hell yes, they can. They are not today. They've been playing very well of late. And I honestly think that if they come back fresh tomorrow, they've got Balkan Bears, they got MVP Phoenix. Both are teams that are good, but are not at the level that Not Today has shown recently. If they beat both of them, they guarantee that they at least move into the fourth place quarterfinal going up against most likely Team Empire and try to earn their way back into the tournament. So I think that this is a uh, possibility for them, but man, their backs are against the wall and they have to fight. The only upside of this for not today is that the forfeit they got was against the team that is most likely going to win this tournament, uh, which means that they did not really lose ground as they probably would have statistically lost that game. I shouldn't say physically. Uh, the physics people will kill me. Uh, theoretically, it would have lost that game anyway. So that is what's going on with MLG Columbus. Lots of drama, lots of fun, but overall, a really great production. Uh, I love what they're doing, and I, I, I've really enjoyed uh, Nahaz Blitz sitting on that panel and doing some really good input. All right, so let's move past that. ESL1 Frankfurt going on right now. Uh, EU Alliance, as expected, did not 
beat Navi and qualified, or did beat up Navi, I'm sorry, and qualified to the land finals. Uh, they've been very impressive, run from the bottom of the bracket with only 2-0 and victories. So they uh, have really pulled it together and fought their way forward in terms of ESL1 Frankfurt to get their qualifiers through. Um, Aces Polar won against Empire in a more one-sided fashion than uh, we might have expected, uh, and they did grab a ticket to Frankfurt. The last spot for you will be token taken by the winner of the lower bracket, with Cloud9 really stepping up their game, and this is a surprise to me. Uh, we talked to last week about how they've really been on the downslide. They have turned it around this week, man. They have done some great stuff, and um, they've destroyed everyone, their team, they are the team that I think could potentially take this thing as you look at how they have just pounded through that loser's bracket. 2-0 Vega, 2-0 Hellraisers, and now going up against Empire. Uh, so that's going to be a pretty interesting fight as they continue to push their way through this one. All right, so uh, that's the update on... Okay, so to continue talking about uh, ESL, we're going to go to the SEA scene now. Um... Only the winner of the single elimination bracket will get to go to Frankfurt for the main event. Rave had some big issues with traveling, uh, has been pulled out from planes, etc. Uh, and that probably affected their performance. Regardless, they are now out of the qualifiers. Uh, that appears that the we have the finals in this are going to be MVP versus Team Malaysia. The winner of that match should be able to take down the last contender and win the trip to Frankfurt because the last two will be looked at with Rave being knocked out by Underminer because of their issue with travel. It's going to be Mineski, Underminer, and yes, Mineski could win. Uh, can they take Phoenix or Malaysia? I don't think so. So that should tell us who will be advancing. The semifinal is sort of uh, like the final in a lot of ways. Chinese qualifiers have just been announced for the same tournament. Uh, the pre-qualifiers are going on right now, and three teams from those pre-qualifiers will join IG, Newbie, Ehome, Tongfu, and LGD in the main qualifier. The main qualifier is going to be a single elimination bracket with only the winner qualifying to the LAN finals. LG and IG uh, defending the, cha the defending champions of ESL Frankfurt 2014 look like the top contenders, uh, of course. So I guess I should say... IG, the defending champions, and LGD look like they are in top-notch form as far as the direct invites go. That said, Evil Geniuses and uh, is still one of the top is the top team in the world. And uh, when we get to the big dog finals, it looks like they will put up quite the fight. So this is going to be a huge tournament once we actually get to ESL One. It's a lot of big teams. We are waiting uh, for the EU, the CN, and the SCA final qualifiers to round out that participating teams list. By the way, the prize pool, $250,000. Uh, not sure on how much it has grown just yet. Summit 3, let's talk EU after an extremely close BO5 against Aces Polar. Team Secret qualifies for the land finals through the winner's bracket. Congratulations to you guys. On the other hand, C9 has stormed the lower's bracket, destroys Aces Polar in the LB finals, and secured the second EU spot. That's tough to do. Aces Polar is no slouches. They literally barely lost to Team Secret, and then Cloud9 raffle stomped them 3-0. This, again... Pitches towards what we'll talk about a little bit later, how C9 has turned things around. They are C and TI, they want to go to TI, and boy, oh boy, are they getting close to doing this thing. North American Summit, uh, the big favorite is EG, qualified through the winner's bracket, of course, but they were forced to the deciding game by Not Today. Not one against uh, Complexity Gaming to get there uh, after making their way through most of the region winner's bracket. And uh, they grabbed the second American qualifier spot. So... Hopefully they can travel to the summit. Summit traditionally has been good about their travel budget, so not today shouldn't have an issue with that. Uh, not today went through Void Boys, Leviathan, uh, and Complexity to get that second qualifier. I think it can be. It's pro uh, you can not argue anymore that not today is not the second North American. I should say uh, not North American. The second Western like American region team. Uh, right behind Evil Geniuses and have been doing a really great job of representing their region in a region that's traditionally underrepresented. So kudos to them. They've been doing a great job. We'll talk a little more about that uh, later on. SEA, uh, we talked about this before. They won a long time ago. Um, so they will be also attending. And finally, in the Chinese scene, LGD is playing against Ehome for the only Chinese slot on the land final tomorrow. Very surprisingly, IG lost to Ehome in HGT and got eliminated from the qualifiers. LGD is the clear favorite to go to the Summit 3. I should say VG will still be 
uh, going. They're the only invite, so that is going to be a Chinese slot. That said, LGD against EO. LGD looks like this should be no problem for them. They've already beat them 2-0. Uh, the shock for me was, like I said, Hyperglory team beat Invictus Gaming 2-1. And then Eon was able to drop HGT. So it was a bit of an upset when Invictus lost to HGT, but a really big upset when they lost 2-0 to Ehome. So hard to say why that happened. There might have been some cockiness to it. Uh, I'm not sure. But IG, a team that a lot of folks consider to be one of the top four teams in the world, just not able to pull it out against Ehome uh, or HGT uh, last week. So that's, that's, that's interesting. Participating teams in the... Uh, Overall, or the, or the big show is going to be, as a recap, VG Gaming, Rave, Evil Geniuses, Not Today, Team Secret, Cloud9, most likely LGD, and then whoever wins the redemption vote. We saw some great redemption stuff come out last year. C9 did a, a, a really good video that got them in. We'll see who earns their way in through redemption this year. And they will probably try because the prize pool started at 100000 It's already up to 235000 It's a 135% increase over the previous numbers. Uh... And it will continue to grow, I would imagine, as we hit the summit. So uh, at this point in time, it was higher last for Summit 2. That said, 235, even if we only hit 250, is still a pretty reasonable, a massive prize pool that will inspire most of these teams to work their hardest. Star Ladder. Wow, is it really Star Ladder 12 already? Star Ladder keeps on plugging along, and we are now in the online stages, or the st online stages have finished, and eight teams for the LAN finals are set with some unexpected results. The main event, event will take place during DreamHack Bucharest, not in Ukraine this time. Vlad's uh, promise has held true, and will be held from 10th to 12th of April. EU, there were two groups of four in the second stage of EU online play, with the top two teams forming each group, qualifying the LAN finals. We said that the first group of, was the group of death, and C9 was the favorites, might not make it. As it turns out, we were completely wrong. C9 won every match and took first place, while Lone Conspiracy ended up with a slightly better record than Asus and Empire. As a result, the uh, Greek squad, interesting. So uh, UK, the organization apparently Luna Conspiracy is from the UK, but all five players are Grecian, is going to the land final, and the defending champions, Empire and Runners Up, Aces are not. So a surprise Luna Conspiracy, who is largely considered to not be nearly as good as Aces Polar Team Empire, was able to make the advanced Cloud9, shows us that they are still the Cloud9 that we know and love. The second group, Team Secret and Alliance, were the clear favorites, and they both qualified. No big surprise there. However, Alliance quite surprisingly have beaten Secret and advanced from the first position. That's a big deal that Alliance came out ahead 3-0. They beat Team Secret. That was a good upset. Many rares were lost, and I'm proud of Alliance for also stepping up their game heading into TI. For the SEA region, we're going to have uh, a double elimination bracket with only the winner advancing. MVP managed to beat MY our team Malaysia 2-0 in the first round of the winner's bracket of Amushi's team came back from the LB and won the final match 2-1, grabbing the only SEA ticket to Bucharest. So great job on the bounce back from the loser's bracket, Team Malaysia, proving that they are the team to be reckoned with over in the SEA. America and China, we talked about this in a previous show. Uh, the qualified teams are Vici, Invictus, Tinker, Malaysia, Cloud9, London Conspiracy, Alliance, and Team Secret. That is who is going to Star Ladder and should be... Uh, I don't know, because I don't know the word, Hefla. I, apparently, I am being corrected and said that Grecian is not a word, and Gr Greek is. I, might, I thought it was an old word. Maybe it's an ancient word for Greek. Any word. Anyway, worth noting that no CIS team in the mix uh, this time. The defending champions, Empire, and the runner-up will also not play in the land finals. So, to be clear... Nobody from the CIS region is playing in Star Ladder. Everybody is traveling from afar. Uh, we have Western European teams, but nobody from that Eastern European grouping. So very interesting. Prize pool is based out of 80,000 at the start. It's been increased to 125. So about a 56 per increase so far. Um, and it is already as big as the increase was for the entire last season. And will probably go much higher as we have some very strong teams playing in these playoffs. All right, next one up is Dota Pit. Top two, the format is this. Top two in each group placed in the winner's bracket. Third place will be placed in a loser's bracket round two. Fourth and fifth place will be placed in a loser's bracket round one. And the sixth place will be eliminated. Group A was a bit of a surprise that EG finished second. Yes, they did. They lost to AS Asus Polar in the round robin of play. Um, as a result, are in second place in that bracket. Asus won the group. 
Uh, so they will be going to the upper bracket. There will have to be a tiebreaker play between NIP and C9 to see who stays in third place. So we're waiting on that tiebreaker to happen. Uh, Secret was on top for quite a while in Group B, as we predicted a while back. HR managed to take second. Third place has been decided based on points. And Alliance had a uh, two wins, one draw, and two lose lo losses. I'm sorry which in point is better than Empire's one win, three draw, one loss. Because of that, Alliance is third and Empire is fourth as they advance to the next round. Playoffs. It is legit. Thank you, Evil Smoke. So Grecian, Grecian is a legit way to say Greek. Yes, I thought I knew that. Uh, playoffs. Because EG didn't win their group, they will face Secret in the first round of the winner's bracket. That is why it is big that EG did not take first place. They're going to have one of their hardest matches, if not their hardest match of the tournament, Right out of the gate in the winner's bracket, round one. Aces will play the winner of C9 NIP tiebreaker. Most likely C9 based on the recent performance, which should also be a really good match. Prize pool started at 80000 It is already up to $257,000. That's a 222% increase for an online tournament. Massive prize pool, massive pride on the line, and a massive game one between Team Secret and EG arguably the two favorites to win this tournament. So that's going to be a fun one, and we'll keep tracking that for you. D2CL <clears throat> is uh, the next one we're going to talk about here. Very briefly, top one from EU group stage qualifies this straight to the land final, while second through fifth place finishes uh, to fight for the two more spots in the playoff. Only one team from the China division qualifies to the land event. Uh, a lot of this stuff going on. Long story short, what you need to know is that there are EG, VG has qualified for the China qualifiers, and we're waiting on three EU teams to make it through qualifiers as well. Uh, we're not going to cover D2CL as aggressively until we hit that sort of playoff stage. Prize pool is at fifty thousand. It will be in, has been increased already to seventy eight. Uh, and it's already more than the tournament had in the last grouping. So D2CL in a bit of a downslide, but hopefully this season picks them up just a little bit. I think VG will help with that. Uh, I League 3, due to the fact that in previous seasons there's been a ton of problems with the organizers, including prize pool changing, banning, unbanning teams, etc. A lot of the top teams have decided not to participate in the qualifiers for the season. This means no EG, no Secret, no Ninjas in Pajamas, no Empire, no Rave, and no C9. Despite that, the prize pool is allegedly set for $300,000. As a result, some of the weaker teams are going to get a chance to change. Uh, a chance to go to China and compete in the tournament with a huge prize pool. So this could be a great opportunity for some of the smaller teams to make the money that they need to keep funding themselves. That said, it is disappointing that the teams that we love in the West, a lot of our favorite top teams, will not be playing. Um, so we will continue to wait and see sort of how that plays out. Uh, EU for them, for I-League, on one side of the bracket, Alliance already has made it into the finals and are waiting for their opponent, which will most likely be Aces Polar. Uh, in America, we would expect Not Today and Team Tinker going to go to the finals. Both of those teams equally strong. Uh, generally estimate the Team Tinker is stronger, uh, but both teams could definitely use the funding of going to win that share of $300,000. In the SEA, uh, we will likely have MVP going from one side and MY going from the other. It is too soon to really know. It, it could be a close call. So I think those are the top two teams in the SEA region that will likely have their shot at the qualification. So participating teams already are guaranteed LGD. They're the only straight invite. As a reminder, one EU, one America, one SEA, and four China teams will be attending I-League this season. Dream League 3 is announced. Now, and it's happening. Uh, it has a very interesting format, so we're going to run over that real quickly. I've got it all pulled up here. There are a ton of qualifiers played from March all the way to the end of April. These are open qualifiers. The top two from each open qualifier goes to a main qualifier. There are four main qualifiers through May 1st. The top one from each of those, and it is a qualified team versus an invited team. So four qualifier teams and four invited teams will be played online and cast from a studio. The top one from each of those advances to league play, which starts May 4th. Or we'll have four qualified teams who came all the way through the slog and four invited teams. Uh, the format will be round robin, best of two matches, and the top six will advance to the DreamHack playoffs at uh, the esports arena in DreamHack in the summer. So it's going to be a long tournament. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, my man OD is there, and he is casting it, so he's going to have more information for us on Monday's show. Uh, OD Pixel will be joining us on the show, giving us a tour of the house. Uh, so it'll be a lot of fun, so make sure you tune back in for that partic particular show. Teams that we know of are participating in some capacity are Alliance, 
Hinges and Pajamas, Empire, Navi, Aces Polar, and uh, whichever other three teams qualify through the actual qualifiers that will be happening uh, from the 14th through May 1st. So should be pretty interesting. Aces Polar, by the way, won that first major qualifier. Next one up to talk about briefly is the Red Bulls Battlegrounds. And uh, that one is basically the top one team from each region will go to the land finals. Uh, EU and America has to be announced. We know that these are the teams that are playing for each region. Europe, Cloud9, Ninja Pajamas, Alliance, and Team Secret. Probably going to be Secret and uh, Advancing. Empire, Polar, Hellraisers, Navi for CIS. Aces Polar looking good over there. China, Invictus, LGD, Ehome, and Newbie. Uh, Invictus and LGD going to be fighting it out. Though, hey, Ehome, now a real force to be reckoned with. SCA, Rave, MVP, Malaysia, Can't Say Whips. And last but not least, America is going to be Team Tinker, Sumner's Wrist, Not Today, and TBD as we wait for that last person to be figured out. Yeah. Base prize pool is $75,000. Uh, so this is another big tournament coming up uh, in the North American region that is going to be a... Uh, uh, popular tournament it depends on if it'll be worth the money for some of these cis teams especially i think and chinese teams to travel over so that's what's going on with red bull the last tournament to talk about briefly and i will because i'm casting it today is vp game pro league this is hosted by join dota for china um they're going through the qualifiers now and they're moving to playoffs the prize pool is about twenty five thousand dollars it's not a massive tournament but it is still relatively popular uh it's got a lot of great chinese teams in it and more importantly i will be casting it all morning so in about an hour you can find me over on join dota red uh if you're watching this live or catch the early taping and i will be there casting for about five hours so uh make sure you guys check that out things to bring up real quick before we move to the power rankings <laughs> I want to say this, man. Uh, we know that invites are going to occur in about less than a month, right after the 1st, May 1st, likely for TI. Teams that I think are really putting up a case to get their invites is Cloud9, man. Last time I talked, I, two weeks ago, I said Cloud9 was in poor form, and they were. That said, they have turned it around. They have pulled themselves up by their bootstraps. They're working their butts off. And I think that right now, they're looking at a TI invite based on their performance. Not today. I'm starting to wonder if they'll get one too. I mean, these guys have been performing. They're consistently showing that they are one of the top players in the region, right behind EG. And um, I think based on the next couple of lands that are coming through, and as, as you can tell from this episode, there's a lot of them. These guys have a really big chance to become true competitors. So keep it up. Uh, congratulations to Not Today. Team Malaysia, another team that has been doing a lot of good work. They're in a bunch of lands. They're qualifying like crazy. But at the end of the day, will that be enough to secure a direct invite? Because they have not been together very long. Not Today has the benefit of having the same roster for an extended period of time, being a team that has established itself and worked their way up. Team Malaysia, not quite the same. So I think that Not Today could get an invite based on their history uh, and recent performance, whereas Team Malaysia very likely uh, will not have that same benefit. So that's it for the tournament roundup. That was a lot to talk about, but it was, uh, I think, valuable for us to understand where the scene is right now. That said, we have something new that I'm going to bring to you. We're going to take a quick commercial break, and when we come back, I am going to reveal to you for the first time, uh, before it's published on any other website, the brand new power rankings and explain what they are. So stick around. Right after this commercial, I'm going to introduce you to the first uh, top 20 international ranking of all of the teams in Dota. Razer Comms is a free all-in-one communication tool that allows you to stay in touch with friends both in and out of the game. With features such as friend lists, groups, mobile SMS forwarding, and call notifications, Razer Comms is a communication solution for the dedicated gamer. Razer Comms minimal in-game overlay has a panel that grabs all your messages and lets you see who is speaking in a voice call without interrupting your game. Now I'll always know who's breathing into the mic. It's always me. By pairing Razer Comms Mobile with your PC, your friends can call you, no matter where you are. All right, we're back. Let's talk power rankings. So, long story short, uh, the reason that power rankings were created, or I put it together, is the idea that a lot of these teams don't get to play each other very often. It's sort of like comparing apples and oranges, and this is something we come across in a uh, U.S. sports at the collegiate level. We have a lot of college teams, and they all go to one giant playoff at the end of the year uh, where they're invited to have championships. It reminds me a lot of TI. That said, they never play each other because they're in different conferences. There's just too many teams to everyone to play each other. And I see that happening a lot with the regions in Dota. So what I came up with was this idea. I said, what if we contacted 
the top professionals in the Dota field. We're talking casters, analysts, strategi- statisticians, content creators, and general experts in the Dota 2 international scene. And I want to pull them. I want their opinions based on what they know about the teams, uh, their experiences, and who they see playing on a regular basis. I want to know what they think the top 20 teams are in the world. We had over 40 of these pro- of these uh, professional Dota analysts uh, get involved and choose to vote. And this week we released the first ever media power rankings for Dota 2. Basically what I did is I had everybody vote. I assigned points from 1 to 20. I then took the points assigned by the voters, picked the average number, uh, and then put that into a stack ranking. So the official stack ranking for the first ever power rankings, and we will publish this um, later today officially uh, through my Twitter as well as some other websites. But you get to hear it here first is number one and this this is the opinion of the top people in dota the ones who are paid to watch dota that's what they do for a living evil genius is number one vg gaming number two team secret number three cloud nine number four invictus gaming number five lgd number six aces polar number seven alliance number eight Team Empire, number 9. E-Home, number 10. Ninjas in Pajamas, number 11. Hellraisers, number 12. Team Tinker, number 13. Rave, number 14. Malaysia, number 15. Hyperglory Team, number 16. Newbie, number 17. Nadis Vincere, number 18. Surprise me. Burton United, number 19. And C-Deck, number 20. And those are your power rankings for the top 20 teams in Dota right now. Some of the surprises on there were the fact that Na'Vi represented 18, I think shows a residual love of the team and the value uh, of perception. So Na'Vi has not been performing that well statistically as far as I can uh, tell. That said, they are still hold a soft spot in the world of Dota. And honestly, when you talk about invites to tournaments, this happens all the time with other sports. Uh, there is something to be said for uh, remembrance is going to be said for a name. Um, in the world of pro surfing, Kelly Slater gets an extra three points. In the world of pro skating, Tony Hawk, when he played, got an extra couple of points. In the world of snowboarding, Sean White gets a couple of extra points because of the name, the nostalgia, the fact that we remember just how good these guys actually are and how they changed the game. So I would not be surprised if Na'Vi is getting a little bit of that legend uh, benefit. That said, they are still all the way down at 18, a long way from where they once stood at the top of that pedestal. Um, that said, I think that the top five is makes sense. A lot of folks would not have expected Cloud9 to have been there at number four after their performance a couple of weeks ago, but I think the world has seen just what these guys can do when they put their minds to it. So uh, that is the power rankings. They're brand new. It's the first time that they have been released. I'm going to try to get these together every week. Uh, we'll release them here on the show as well as on Twitter as uh, whatever website wants to run it. For those who are curious, uh, the media rankings, this power rankings, I am I am paying for all of the required bandwidth. Uh, the, we run it through a survey group. They send out the official surveys to the voters. The votes are anonymous. The voters are kept anonymous. I know who they are because I contacted each and every one of them and put them on a list so that we can email them. That said, I will not confirm or deny who is on the list. So do not come and ask me if they are. If someone chooses to say that they're on the list, that is their decision. Uh, They can choose to reveal that. I will not, however, talk about their votes or even confirm that they are on the list should someone ask, unless it is an extreme circumstance. That said, uh, everything is kept anonymous, so I do not know who voted for what, and uh, I am paying a survey service to do the compilations for me so that we can have a third party who has no partiality whatsoever involved. Uh, No sponsors are involved with the list uh, as it is being taken, so literally everything that was needed to pay for this is coming right out of my pocket because I want to keep this as free from conflict of interest as possible. Every single media site, if you run a website, if you're an EIC, if you're a content maker, and you want this list sent to you, it is yours, free of charge. All you have to do is ask me. Um, I want to make sure that everyone has access to it. There's no conflict whatsoever as to who participates or what the votes are. And as a result, we have people voting on this from every major studio, every major group, every major scene. 
within Dota, and I think that that's the key to it being successful. So uh, glad that so many people participated. It was a great first showing, and I think that these rankings are very telling for where we're headed uh, during the invite period in May. That said, that's the show for today, guys. Uh, my name is Toffees. You can follow me at Toffees underscore Dota 2. If you want to support the show, you can head over to patreon.com slash Toffees and choose to support. That is the only way, I suppose, if you want to uh, say that some of that can go towards paying for the survey, uh, that's fine, but we will not expect any sp no sponsor money will be put towards uh, the power rankings. That said, the show today is brought to you by the folks at Razor and the folks over at Betway, a brand new esports betting site that is um, a really large, well-known betting group for other sports. They're a sports betting group uh, that does a lot with the European area. Uh, that said, they are starting esports, and so far from what I've seen, it seems very fair. Uh, their numbers are good, and it's a little less shady than some of the other. Or it's a lot less shady than the other organizations that I've seen out there. Um, I definitely trust them with my bets, and I think that uh, it's a good opportunity. So if you want to check them out, if you want to give it a try, there's a link on the bottom of my Twitch, twitchtv toffees underscore Dota two. Uh, if you click that and head over, I think that they give you some free money, so you can try it out for the first time without having to. Uh, risk anything on your own. So definitely worth checking it out. Uh, that said, guys, it's been a great show. Thank you for listening. Uh, and as always, Toffee's out. <laughs>